root of the tree of life. As we know, the, it's a, the, the tree of life is a concept by the Darwin. And uh, we now have, uh, um, I mean, this is the core of the taxonomy, you see, the, the, the tree of life. And how the, the root, I mean, the major kingdoms, domains and empires are arranged. Of course, this keep on changing with the new, uh, you know, systems of classification whenever it is being published. So, going back in time, 1735, Linnaeus started uh, with two kingdom classification, Vegetablia and Animalia. And during his time, of course, uh, uh, bacteria were actually so it was known by Anton van Leeuwenhoek, but probably Linnaeus was not updated with that discovery. Going on in uh, from Sweden, it's uh, you know the Denmark, uh, the Holland was quite nearby, but still he was not updated perhaps. So in his classification, there's only two things: Vegetablia and Animalia. And Heckel revised to add Protista. So look, Protista is older than Monera or bacteria, you know, protists, protists were discovered earlier, right? Then Plantae and Animalia. Then Chatton put in two empires. So before that, Heckel and Linnaeus, it was kingdoms. And uh, by Chatton, it is 1925. Uh, 1925 means almost one century back. It's two empire. Prokaryota and Eukaryota, which is still accurate. Even today, we, you know, broadly, we can say that life is of two types prokaryotes and eukaryotes you know and we can see that Chatton's two ampere system is being revisited by Carl Rose later then in 1938 Copeland you know Herbert Copeland put in four kingdom classification he introduced the, the bacteria Monera then Protoctista Plantae Protoctista again and Animalia so the two Protoctista kingdom so because some are uh, kind of uh, plant-like protist. So that is why he erected two uh, separate kingdoms for protists and animalia. And in 1969, Whittaker's five kingdom classification, perhaps most well-known among all this sign, uh, kind of classification is that Monera, Protista, Plantae, Fungi and Animalia, five kingdoms of life. And Wu's et al. in 1977, he erected Archaebacteria as a separate uh, you know kingdom so he his earliest classification uh, by the way moose is a very famous archaeobacteriologist from uh, us uh, he recently passed away a few years back so he erected archaeobacteria as a kingdom in 1977 subsequently he revised in 1990 uh, with three domains uh, this one is completely based on ribosomal dna sequences you see bacteria archaea and eukarya only three domains of life bacteria, archaea and eukarya which is even now considered to be accurate so perhaps most of the textbook these days follow uh, Carvo's three domain classification you know and uh, which again got revised in 2004 uh, Cavalier Smith from Oxford University in UK uh, he erected six kingdoms classification uh, bacteria, protozoa, chromista he added a new uh, kingdom chromista Plantae, fungi, and animalia. So basically, what he did is that proto protozoa or protista he divided into two major kingdoms, protozoa and chromista. And he also did com com he combined the bacteria and archaea into uh, just one kingdom, bacteria. You see, so not many people agree with this classification, but still, it is considered to be the most accurate and most current system of uh, classification. You know, there is no sign cons consensus. Uh, in which classification is the most accurate and it keeps on evolving as the time goes by uh, tomorrow a new taxonomist might come and will erect a new kind of classification we, we have to watch and see the science is all about uh, refutations and uh, you know progressing right progress in science is achieved by criticism and uh, the, the two things which I just said is the first is Wu's 1990 and Cavalier's mid 2004 so archaeobacteriology, by the way, Carl Woos, I told you, is an archaeobacteriologist. So he elevated uh, his pet taxa archaeobacteria to the domain, see. So that is why in the last slide I said that it suffers from the confirmation bias, the cognitive bias. Some of you are taking my course on scientific thinking and um, mathematical biology, where I introduced the term confirmation bias in the critical thinking, you know. So confirmation bias is that uh, tendency to... Uh, say what we believe in 
you know and we look at the proof that evidences uh, to substantiate what we believe is true so that kind of judgmental attitude is called confirmation bias so yes this is suffered by confirmation bias because Woost is an archaeobacteriologist and that is the reason that he put archaeobacteria as a, a top level domain in early he put uh, archaeobacteria as a kingdom he was not satisfied he wanted much bigger role so he put archaea archaea as the domain it's one third importance of the entire life went for archaea and while at the same time cavalier smith you see uh, not into the confirmation by yeah he is too so the oxford protectologist see the cavalier smith is a protozoologist or protectologist so he elevated protista into two major kingdoms of life chromista and protozoa uh, because most probably this is one of factor causing factor so that he is a protozoologist so basically the confirmation bias is in, in, in key here. So protistologist Cavalier Smith completely rejected whose domain and group archaeobacteria within the bacteria, you see. Thereby, of course, denigrating the rank of uh, bacteria uh, by doing this work. And his sixth kingdom is centered on the protists, you know, so protozoa. A protist is what his sixth kingdom classification is centered on and as of now there is no consensus exists among the taxonomist so if you look at the root of the tree of life by the way itol or interactive tree of life is an exciting uh, platform it's a website you can actually click on and zoom into each branch of the tree of life so if you go to the root you can see these two uh, you know the three domains plus the virus of course virus uh, you know the uh, position within the tree of life is not known and there is uh, you know there is a uh, no consensus exists that the virus should be classified as a living or non living see covid 19 is also by uh, a virus right sars cov 2 so now coming to the virus so virus can be crystallized just like a protein in a lab and uh, you know uh, virus is live only when it is inside a host see it's an obligate intracellular pathogen so it is like half dead and uh, half living so it is right on the borderline uh, which constitutes what is living and what is not living so it's the position is ambiguous so broadly three domains eubacteria eukaryotes and archaeobacteria so by the way eubacteria and archaeobacteria both are prokaryotes while eukaryotes are eukaryotes right so that is what the root of the tree of life so now if you look at the root there are two kinds of root uh, archaea tree and eocyte tree while in both the cases there is no conflict that eukarya is more close to uh, you know uh, archaeobacteria you know eukaryotes is a lot more closer to uh, archaeobacteria rather than eubacteria eubacteria means uh, the real bacteria you see like e coli while well, archaeobacteria is uh, living uh, in you know in harsh conditions that you can just take it as a heuristic so but it might not be the true as well archaeobacteria as you can see in your gut as well you see also on your skin so archaeobacteria and eukaryotes share a lot of things together rather than either with eubacteria and that is why these two are uh, you know two together form a clade in both these phylogenetic system the the difference here is that in this tree archaea tree eukaryote sister clade is archaea so the the nearest common ancestor is archaea as the as a whole including uri archaeota and green archaeota and eocyte so basically eocyte is another name for green archaeota which is a, a subclass within the archaea uh, domain you see so eukaryote in this case the sister relationship is with the entire archaea in the archaea tree and that is why the name archaea comes in now in this case eocyte tree the sister is eocyte it's not the whole archaea so eukaryote sister clade is green archaeota or eocyte then comes uri archaeota then comes the eubacteria you see and in this case you can see that uh, archaeobacteria as such is not monophyletic in eocyte tree but in archaea tree archaeobacteria is monophyletic monophyletic means one file you know one clade that can be cut by just one cut but in this case eocyte it is not you know it is not um, a clade it is not monophyletic that is uh, the main difference between these two trees 
So if you compare the three domains, archaea, bacteria, and eukarya, you can see a lot of things, uh, the differences, right? For example, subunit, small subunit, RNA, nucleotide, base sequence positions, uh, there is a difference between all the three domains. And uh, membrane lipids, if you look, archaea, it's ether-linked, while bacteria it is ester-linked, while eukarya is also uh, ester-linked. So in this case, archaea is different from bacteria and eukarya. Right? So predominantly unicellular, of course, both the prokaryotes are archaea and bacteria prokaryotes, uh, you know, uh, this is predominantly multicellular. So multicellularity is only in eukarya, isn't it? But of course, there are certain eukaryotes which are unicellular too, especially protozoans. Cell wall, if you look, archaebacteria has cell wall, bacteria has cell wall, but eukarya usually don't have cell wall. Uh, unless it is plant, you see, uh, animal eukaryotes don't have any cell wall. So peptidoglycan is special only for, uh, you know, only for uh, uh, bacteria as well as, uh, you know, the, uh, uh, the archaea, right? No, not for the eukarya, right? The peptidoglycan is not present for the eukaryotes. So membrane-bound organelles are present only for the eukaryotes and survival above 80 degrees Celsius, see, that is only for the prokaryotes, that is basically archaea and bacteria, right? Ribosomes, if you look at the ribosomes, the eukaryotes ribosome is 80S, while prokaryotes is 70S. Circular DNA is, uh, as you can see, that circular DNA is present for uh, both archaea and uh, bacteria, while for the eukaryote it is not, so it's linear. Histones is present, this is a very interesting characteristic. Histone is present for eukarya and archaea, but it's missing for bacteria. So that is why people now say that archaea is a lot more closely related with the eukarya rather than bacteria, you see. Even though archaea and eukarya are uh, quite different, you see. So archaea is a prokaryote while eukarya is a eukaryote, still this is the case. Transcription factors are required for bacteria and eukaryotes, but not for the archaea. RNA polymerase, as there are several RNA polymerase for archaea, uh, while for bacteria it is one and eukaryotes it's three. Uh, you know, initiator tRNA is methionine for both archaea and eukarya. See again, archaea and eukarya are quite similar. At the same, uh, at the same time, for bacteria it is uh, formyl methionine, which is different. So introns in the tRNA, yes, yes. So that is archaea and eukarya have got introns in the tRNA while for bacteria there, is, there are no introns. So coming to the domain, it is the broadest and most inclusive taxon. You know, the, the root of tree of life is basically the domains. There are three domains, archaea and eubacteria are unicellular prokaryotes, no nucleus or membrane bound organelles, while eukarya are a lot more complex and have a nucleus and membrane bound organelles. Now coming first to the domain archaea, previously thought to inhabit only harsh environments, but now we know that it's everywhere. Predominant component of the oceanic plankton, that's a really interesting fact about archaea. Uh, if you look at the plankton, plankton means actively, uh, not actively swimming, but they are actually uh, floating entities on the surface of the ocean, you know, mostly plankton, the phytoplankton are photosynthetic. So we have RK in our gut microbiome as well as in our skin. So methanogens, thermus aquaticus, source of tag polymerase, all these are, uh, you know, this uh, archaea, uh, example of the archaea. So of course, the thermus aquaticus, the tag polymerase is very important for the PCR reactions, you know. And uh, archaea is found in sewage treatment plants, thermal or volcanic vents, hot springs or geysers that are acid, you know, and very salty water like Dead Sea or Great Salt Lake, it can thrive in more than 5 molar sodium chloride, which is uh, extremely salty, you know, archaea can live in. So I got a privilege to be part of the Antarctic mission. So one of the places where I've been to is uh, Westfall Hills. Uh, which is, uh, you know, which is uh, near Davis Station of uh, Australia. Westford Hills is uh, is very near to the Lost Mat Hills where our station, Bharati Station is located. So in Westford Hills, there is a lake, very famous lake, it's called Deep Lake. So the Deep Lake is very interesting because the salinity is extremely high, you know, and really nothing grows in that uh, lake except uh, archaebacteria, you see. Archaebacteria can thrive in such a very high salinity, 5 molar sodium chloride, you know, and it's not merely extreme high salinity, but the deep lake gets extreme 
a cold. You see, it's in Antarctica, right? Usually, the temperature itself is very low. It can go up to minus 79 degrees Celsius, and also the UV light is also very high. UV radiation, right? So, deep lake possesses such a great uh, extreme environment like no other place on Earth has. And why that is really special? So scientists are really interested to see what are the unique biochemical pathways that the life uh, adapted to this such, such extreme environments have. So that might be a key for uh, future therapeutics. You know, who knows? So that is what the scientists are looking at. So Antarctica is deep like a frigid home for steadfast archaea. You know, so this is uh, 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 that is basically from the ASM blog, that is uh, American Society of uh, Bacteriologists. So link is in uh, our uh, course website. Please have a look, right? So if you look at the Archean, one of the uh, example of Archean is Methanosarcina mazei, right? An example of an Archean. As you see, the 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 word Sarcina, the Latin means Sarcina, just like the uh, like Staphylococcus aureus, you know, just like them. The arrangement of the grapes, you know, as you can see, the globules arranged like sarsine fa uh, fashion, and that is what, why the name is methanosarcina, right? So, of course, within the archaea, this is what the mainly there are three kind of uh, uh, you know subgroup classification: core archaeota, green archaeota, and uri archaeota. So within this uh, green archaeota and uri archaeota, these are the very uh, various kinds of archaeal divisions. I'm not really going to deep into the archaeal classification, but you can also have a look. Uh, you know, thermos is one of the famous or methano sarcine, as I told you, halobacterial. So you know, all these or sulfurobus is another uh, a famous genus of the archaea. Coming to the U, domain U bacteria, it was a, 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 perhaps the last ancestor Luca, that is last universal common ancestor, uh, that is the first life on Earth. So it was um, more like a bacteria rather than archaea. So though the name archaea might give you a clue that it's the oldest bacteria, but that is not the case. You see, ba U bacteria is older than archaea in one, many several sense. So most of the pathogens of the infectious diseases are bacteria, you know, so it's, a, uh, it's really important for infectious diseases concerned. Uh, of course, it's not all, right? COVID-19 is not a bacterial infection, it's a viral infection, but still. So it's found in all habitats except in harsh ones. So harsh ones is usually, it is uh, archaebacteria, I told you. So it's also important as gut microbiome. A lot of studies on gut microbiome as well as the fecal transplantation. You know the transplantation of the feces matter, the excrement from healthy a person to uh, a patient uh, to induce the to change its gut microbiome. By the way, gut microbiome is uh, it's an active research field. Lots of things are happening in the field of gut microbiome, and gut microbiome is linked with even the depression, you know, or neurological diseases and even diabetes and heart disease and cancer are uh, getting revealed day by day. So gut microbiome is. Uh, it's a very exciting field for sure. So important decomposers of the environment, the uh, the U bacteria are, and commercially important in making so many uh, you know products. Uh, for example, curd here in the, the yogurt, buttermilk, also cheese paneer, you know, and also for uh, yeah, I mean cottage cheese. All these things are a uh, fermentation, you know, it's by the uh, the U bacteria. So first life, many uh, scientists uh, know saying that the first life originated, uh, there are no consensus really, but one of the, uh, uh, one group of scientists from Canada, they say that the first life originated 4.2, uh, you know, billion years ago. As you can see, this sort of tube-like uh, structures are thought to be of the, the bacteria. It's basically uh, uh, not a new bacteria, but it's a, it's a bacteria. That is why Luca is more, more or less to be, it's accepted to be a bacteria rather than an, uh, an archaea bacteria, you know, last universal common ancestor. So this is what the last universal common ancestor and from this always, uh, almost all of the root of the tree of life was dominated by a U bacteria. Then only archaea bacteria and eukaryotes originated from Neomurans. So Neomura is considered to be, uh, uh, you know, the last common ancestor between eukaryotes and archaebacteria. Uh, no, uh, so Luca is a eubacteria, as I told you. From Luca, one of the earliest splitter is chlorobacteria. 
So today is also chlorobacteria is an active lineage of the bacteria. So if you look at the chlorobacteria, it can give you a lot of clue about the first life on earth. You know, so origin of life, uh, the Urey and Miller experiment you might uh, remember. You know, all this how the the, li the life on earth originated. So to know that. Uh, you know, looking at how the chlorobacteria live is a very good clue because chlorobacteria is very close to the LUCA if you look at the ribosomal RNA sequence. And LUCA then so many uh, eubacterial clades subsequent originated including hadobacteria, then uh, gracilutes, urebacteria and cyanobacteria. See, cyanobacteria is also one of the earliest splitting clade and cyanobacteria is still active. Of course, the major planktons of the world are cyanobacteria, picoplanktons, you know, uh, a proctorococcus, a cyanococcus or cyanobacteria. Then urebacteria to endobacteria, actinobacteria, and then from actinobacteria, neomorans originator, and then from neomorans, archaea and eukarya, you see. So E. coli is an example of the bacterium, right? So I told you in 2004, the Cavalier Smith introduced six kingdom classification, which is now, uh, uh, you know, the uh, considered to be the most valid among the taxonomists of the world. So he erected uh, six kingdoms of the life. Of course, virus is not part of any of these kingdoms. So bacteria, including the archaebacteria. Then uh, there are two major, uh, you know, groups or uh, uh, super domains of the uh, eukaryotes. So some types of eukaryotes is called bicont, while another type of eukaryote is known as unicont. So bicont means ancestrally biflagellate. Cont, K-O-N-T means flagella. So bicont means two flagella in ancestral. Even now, the, the motile stage of the life cycle of any of these usually has two flagella. Of course, there are exceptions like, uh, you know, the red algae. So red alkyl life cycle has got no motile phase. So there are exceptions, but the general trend is that, uh, you know, uh, wherever there is a motile phase of the life cycle, for example, human life cycle, we have a motile phase of the human life cycle. Do you know which is that? Yes, sperms, right? Uh, male, uh, gametes, the sperms are the only motile phase in the human life cycle. So the motile phase, the sperm, how many flagella it has? One flagella, and that is why we are part of this uh, unicorn. Metazoa is animal. All animals, uh, you know, the, usually it has got only one flagella in the motile phase. Fungi too, together it's called opistoconda plus amoebozoa together makes unicorn. And in the case of bicond, it there are the three, uh, you know, kingdoms: Chrome alveolata, including all the brown algae. Archaeplastida, including all the green plants and green algae and red algae, and uh, protozoa. Protozoa is all about the protists, you know, rhizaria and excavator. So, if you look at the root of the tree of life by Brown and Doolittle in 1995, very well cotton paper, you can see that based on this uh, particular locus, that is isoleucine tRNA synthetase gene, he uh, he arrived this tree. So in this tree, you can see that archaea and eukaryotes, uh, you know, they are sister clades. So eukaryote sister clade is archaea. So it's an archaea, not eocyte tree, but it's an archaea tree. And bacteria, you see, bacteria is separate. So in as you can see in these trees, eukaryotes and archaea are sister clades and together it forms a monophyletic group supported by 75%, 75 is the bootstrap proportion, you know percentage bootstrap proportion while bacteria is of course bacteria is monophyletic in any kinds of classification system now the, the only point is that whether archaea is a monophyletic or not so in archaea tree yes but for eocyte tree no as i've already explained to you so i suggest all of you to have a look at the it oil that is interactive tree of life to see the root especially you can see the two alternate viewpoints uh, you know, it has been covered in IT or L as well. So eukaryotes and archaebacteria. So these are archaebacteria and eukaryotes, uh, plants and animals, fungi, protozoa all together are grouped in one domain. Right? While another major domain is full of uh, eubacteria, the real bacteria. These are all bacteria, the blue one. So another alternative representation is in 1999. 
uh, Fortere and Philippe's uh, Root of the Tree of Life is you can see it from here the Luca uh, Eukarya is separate while Archean bacteria separate you know it's like oldest Monera classification were uh, you know, uh, Archibacteria and uh, Eubacteria together they grouped it. And this is the same thing what Cavier Smith also grouped, right? Archibacteria and Eubacteria he grouped together in the Kingdom Bacteria. But somehow this is not really lacking uh, the molecular evidence, you know. But this tree you can see that there are two colors. Uh, this color, the, the, the orange color uh, is about complexification. So the things gets complex, you know, uh, the uh, biochemical complexification happens. And this blue color means simplification. So as you can see that uh, complexification happens to a certain level, then simplification happens towards archaea and bacteria in general, while complexification happens towards eukarya in general, except further simplification for microsporidia. So that is what this tree, it's not that very popular and also scientific consensus says that uh, most probably the eocyte tree uh, is the most accurate one. So this is a generalized scheme based on the Cavalier Smith as you can see the kingdom bacteria. So which is also not really conflicting with the Carl Vosey's three domain system. You can see that here Archaebacteria is separated uh, from the bacteria and ancestral neomuran is uh, the last common ancestor between archaebacteria and the entire eukaryotes you see so that is also quite similar to the archaea tree you know and only uh, uh, difference is that according to cavalier smith archaea and bacteria together forms one kingdom you know and then of course unicorns and bicorns unicorn has got two kingdom kingdom fungi and animalia while bicorns have got three kingdoms plantae protozoa and chromista so you can see that the three arrows here the first arrow is pe that is primary endosymbiosis from cyanobacteria uh, which is now known to be very similar to uh, proctorococcus and cyanococcus to picoplankton so it got engulfed by an ancestral archaeoplastidin you know the kingdom plantae to form the the, the chloroplast you see so the kingdom plantae have got a chloroplast bond with the you know or one membrane right so it's basically two membrane so the membrane come the first membrane comes from the cyanobacteria and the invagination of the ancestral membrane of the plantae so that is what the primary endosymbiosis is about <coughs> and subsequently a member of the kingdom plantae that is archiblastida uh, so basically this is an algae green algae got engulfed by an ancestral protozoa to form this group Kingdom protozoa, secondary endosymbiosis. Now, a secondary endosymbiosis by a red algae is thought to have resulted the kingdom chromista. You know, so we now have got three kingdoms inside bicorns: plantae, protozoa, and chromista. We will see all these things uh, subsequently in this class, right? All these kingdoms.